Joe, I'm happy to start then. Um, let's go with the captain, Harry Wilson. What stood out leadership-wise about him, particularly sort of coming off, throwing him into the deep end now in the second half, that Springboks game in Perth? Uh, yeah, Harry, Harry's been really good for us. Um, and I think he's led himself really well. Uh, he, he has a natural um, propensity to express himself well, um, but with very few words. And I, th I don't think that we want to be doing too much talking. It's it's about the actions that he's going to deliver um, and, and lead lead from the front effectively. As Harry Sun that was you know in doubt for those first couple of games with a broken arm, how have you seen him grow in camp since being back here and back in the wild environment after missing last year? Yeah, I, again, I, I was disconnected from last year, obviously, but I've I've found him to be incredibly coachable, um, committed to his to his craft. And, um, and and he's contributed really positively in the in the overall team environment. And just on debut time, Hamish Stewart, um, he's a guy that's been around for a lot of these camps, but now he's his shot. What do you like about Hamish? And what sort of different dynamic can you add to this back line? He he is a massive team man, uh, Hamish. He, he's warmed up for every single test we've played so far, uh, without getting a run at all. Um, he, he has contributed to other people being as prepared as we could have them and, and it's great that he's got the opportunity now to prepare himself to go out in um, you know, a really big ar arena um, where the expectations are going to be high and, um, and, and the pressure is going to be just as high, particularly you know, in, in terms of uh, Augustine Creevy's um, potentially his last game by the sound of things and um, you know, having brought a few different teams here to uh, Argentina. They're, they're very much emotionally connected as a group and, and to the support that they get in the arena. Hey Joe, someone like a Harry, is he a, a short-term option as the Wallabies captain or, or could he potentially go on a run and make this his own? Yeah, it's really hard to say um, just because we are where we are with uh, with the balance of personnel we have at the moment, and and, and even the uh, experience or lack thereof, uh, as particularly in terms of being captain um, at this level. There are other guys who um, you know will will help him lead his way around the field as well. There's there's guys who've been provincial provincial captains or, or, or super club captains, and there are guys who uh, who have accumulated a few more tests than Harry. But uh, in terms of the way he's led himself, and, and you know, sometimes it's a balance about a guy playing really well in his position, and you just want him to stay focused on what he's delivering really well, rather than distract him with a, another responsibility. And then there's... Oh, sorry, there's, there's other guys, you've mentioned the Super Rugby captains like Jake and Tate and so forth. You, you made mention of Harry about, you know, actions over words. Is that actually what, like, is that a big thing for you at the moment that, that you just want the talking on the field and nothing else? Because it, it, there could have been more obvious picks. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about obvious picks in, internally anyway. Um, we're pretty happy with the selection uh, amongst the coaching group and um, that some, some of the coaches would know Harry better than I do. Um, and, and even talking to some of the players about who, who would be best to step up, um, you know, there, there was a lot of confidence around Harry. Uh, Jake has played really well for us and his focus on making sure that he continues to do that um, he also chalks up some incredible miles in the game. His, his ability to get to a ball and then get to the next and get to the next. And, and we just don't want to break that rhythm uh, for Jake. And there's a, there's a few other guys who, as I said before, they're, they're playing well. Um, they're, they're in a, a really good rhythm and, and we don't want to, to break that because collectively, again, there's, there's changes and and there's a bit of continuity now, and I'm hoping that that continuity will, um, you know, will allow the performance to be a little bit more cohesive. Joe, uh, you're playing in uh, La Plata, uh, Estudiantes ground there. It's quite narrow from from memory, and it's going to chuck rain. Has that a, has that affected <coughs> your plans in terms of the line out and the way you want to play? Yeah, it's it's a little bit like the. The Perth week um, at the moment. We, we had a smashing week all week, trained um, to be fine weather fast, and then suddenly, you know, 
but but we've seen the forecast from from the start of the week, and it's it's said that there's rain Friday, Saturday, so. Um, yeah, it, it will affect it to a degree. The, the field is also shorter, um, so you know even with your kicking game, if you're if you're kicking long down the middle or um, you're kicking into that angled into the corners because of the rain, um, then you, you're just going to have to be really accurate with that as well. Um, also, obviously, Tanyal is back, which is marvelous um, after mm -hmm. the side passing. Of his father, and um, can you just take us through obviously the decision for Taniella to start as opposed to Alan, who has led the team the last two tests? Joe, just why maybe the decision for Taniella to start? Yeah, it's it's a really tough decision because Alan has played well for us and he brings a, a calm leadership to the group, but at the same time, when you're not in the starting 15, you tend to get less reps at training. Alan's already got a pretty good rhythm with us. Taniella's been away. So for Taniella to get the best entry into the game, uh, we just felt that it was better for him to start. You can also control his minutes a little bit more easily as well. Um, you know, it, it, if, if he's coming off the bench, it's a little bit harder to know uh, when to put him on. Whereas we'll, we'll get an indication and, and have no hesitation um, helping Nella uh, with with Alan coming off the bench, so we feel like that that was just the best way to do it in terms of reintroducing Nella. And just uh, the final question for me on, on props, Joe uh, James Slipper. Obviously, uh, he's so near that that, that milestone. With, uh, was he close to to getting in that starting fifteen or or on the bench, or did you just think? You know, he's been through a fairly tumultuous and amazing time as well. Let's give him a bit of a spell. Yeah, I had the discussion with uh, with Slips kind of a couple of weeks ago, really. He was joining us late um, uh, after his new addition, and, and that, that's pretty exciting for him. So he's had enough excitement for one week, I think. Um, and uh, again, he's come in and helped other guys prepare really well because because he is such a team orientated squad orientated player um, so we, that that was already probably a preconceived plan to be honest thanks Joe uh, Joe um, hi there uh, Tate McDermott yesterday was talking about the narrow approach that you've taken and how he wasn't used to it and he didn't feel the super rugby teams played that way I'm wondering if you've noticed that they're taking a bit longer than you might have thought to adapt. Do you see that there is a, a big change in tactics from what the Super Rugby teams are? And are you happy with the kind of progress that the teams are making, putting into to play what you're trying to do with them? Yeah, I probably just don't understand narrow, Tony, if you could define that for me in terms uh, it of... It was kind of his his talk about that, that, that um, I've not got the exact quote here, just but I can grab it. Um, he's saying that it's a different a different way they want to attack. Um, he said, we play a very expansive game and Joe's plan for us is pretty narrow. When we're narrow, that's a width we want to attack. So it's very direct and a skillful <coughs> game plan at the line. Our adjustment period is probably not quite where we need it to be in regards to how we play Super Rugby and how we want to play here because it's very different to how every Super Rugby team plays. I'm just kind of wondering if you do think it's very different to how they've been playing at Super Rugby, whether you've kind of trying to change that up and whether they are adjusting to it. Um, I mean, they're Tate word, Tate's words, not mine. Yeah, yeah. No, it, and I think that gives it a better context um, to, to understand it. I think one of the things mm -hmm. is that um, we're pretty expensive against Wales and, and Georgia. Um, I, I think we... Um, we were pretty keen to get some width into our game against South Africa in the first one, um, but it was pretty torrential rain. It was wet in Melbourne as well in the second Welsh test. So, you know, we, ha we haven't exactly been blessed with uh, the sort of weather that lends itself to expansive rugby. I think one of the things around playing South Africa the last couple of weeks was around the width, if you, if you stand wide, 
by the time you've made two passes, they land on the second pass receiver and they make your life very difficult for you. So um, if you can tighten up your passing, force them to come in toward you and then try to play around them or try to play through them, I think you just give yourself a better chance of not being knocked over by big men coming forward at, at high speed, um, particularly e even through the middle of the field with guys like Jesse Creel and Damien Delonde, um, even Lacanio Arm, the, the big men who hit hard and some mentioning the, the guys like Steph Detoy and the like. So if, you, if, you, if you're going to start throwing wide passes that they land on you with, you, you're going to get knocked around pretty quickly. It's, a, it, it's such a different level from Super Rugby. I've, I've coached a number of years mm -hmm. of Super Rugby and, and a lot more years of, uh, of Test Rugby. And um, if, if, if you think you can just supplant one way of playing into a, into a Test arena, I think there's a degree of risk in that. I'm not saying that we don't want to play expansively. We just probably, in the last couple of weeks, haven't, haven't probably had the conditions and don't look like we're going to get the conditions again this week. Um, are you happy with the adjustment? I guess there was a, when you started, you talked about how you needed to find your rhythm very, very quickly. Do you, do you feel you're on course and that you are finding that rhythm, that the players are learning what they need to learn at the speed you want them to? Yeah, I, I, I think if you talk to any coach, they're impatient. They want, uh, they want things adopted quickly, understood quickly and, and delivered even faster. So there is a process a process to that, particularly when you know, we, we have had a lot of changes from game to game. We are trying to, to increase the, the, probably the breadth and depth of our player pool because um, we, we know that you know, no matter how hard you try, if you lose a couple of players in one particular position, you immediately become vulnerable if you haven't built that strength and depth. And um, you know, we're trying to probably cover a number of bases um, at the same time, you know, grow the way we ga the, the game we play, but also grow the, the strength and depth of the players who are able to play that game. And, um, and, and then you're also in a competition with three of the four uh, semi-finalists from the World Cup last year. Um, so you're up against very tough opposition to try to implement anything that is new. Last one on line, guys, if there's anything, that, and then we'll so, come sorry, to the Sorry, just one more on, on that. Um, 15 debutants in 2024, um, and you, you talked just there about growing the strength and depth. Um, Eddie, Eddie Jones, when he came in, it was all about a smash and grab at the World Cup, and then he shifted to 2027 with yourself. What's the end game in your mind? Is it British and Irish Lions? Because obviously that's where contract goes. But what's <laughs> what are you building the strength and depth towards? Is it that, or is it the World Cup, or is do, do you have like a goal in mind for why why all the changes? Why the, the growing of the, the base? Yeah, some some of the changes Tony have been enforced, so uh, they haven't all been by design. They've been by demand, really, but. Um, it, it, we, we are, and I know it's paradoxical, but we're trying to take a long-term view with a short-term focus. Uh, we're trying to win um, a, a test match on Saturday, but, but we're also trying to take a long-term view and invest in, in the development of a number of players that we believe will be able to provide a, a, a base um, of, of players for uh, the Wallabies through to the Lions and through to that 2027 World Cup, which is, which has to be part of any any long-term planning, um, because it, it's going to be a, a massive um, opportunity to showcase the game and promote the game and be really competitive in the game, um, in, in Australia itself. Thanks, guys. Thank uh, anything in the room? Um, uh, yes, here. Can I ask last one? Oh, sorry, we're just running out of time. I've got to get Joe here, <coughs> and there's some guys in the room. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, we, we can take one, Mel. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, like, um, you mentioned about the Pumas playing in the semi final. I mean, historically, Australia had always done well against uh, Argentina, but do you arrive sort of in uh, this match as very much the underdogs? I mean, you know, they're got that win over New Zealand, you know, a thing sort of changed, I suppose, in that regard? Yeah, it's not something that 
I overly focus on. I think externally, it's people have perceptions of how the game might go and, and who might be favourite and who might not be. Um, I, I did have a chat to Felipe Contepomi a, a little bit earlier. I'd know Felipe well, and and I think we're both pretty pragmatic as coaches. We're just trying to trying to win the moments during the week that we need to invest in, and and then try to be as competitive as we can be on Saturday. And the perceptions externally, we we try not to be too affected by them. Um, obviously, Argentina won in Australia last year, and and. and Got further into the World Cup, obviously, than 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 Australia did. So, in in recent times, um, e even in terms of their competitiveness against the All Blacks, I thought um, while the All Blacks got away on them in the first half, uh, in, in their second game, it was seven all in the second half, and and to, to spend a half that was that was seven all with uh, what was a pretty rampant All Black team, I thought was was an indication of just how uh, formidable the, the Puma are currently.